Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshing, a matter of Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. And <clears throat> coming at you here from the home office at Matter of Outfitters. And we're nearing the end of 2023. And we always like to take some time and reflect on the year that we've had, both here in the shop and on the YouTube channel and on the water. And of course, it's been a great year here in the shop, uh, especially thanks to you all. It was a great season. And uh, we couldn't do it without your help, your friendship, your support. And uh, it dawned on us as we're looking over the year on the YouTube channel, uh, some of my favorite educational content, I think, was this year. Of course, we had a lot of help from a lot of good friends. Of course, you saw Flip Pallet. We'll be with Flip in a few days. Kelly Gallup. Kelly will be here in early February. Uh, Blaine Chocolate. We've got a lot of plans with Blaine this coming season. Tim Flagler. Eddie Nickens. John Tarr. Lots of help from the staff here as well. Of course, we appreciate them immensely. So we don't want to take just a few minutes and show you some of the highlights from the educational content we shared on the channel this season. Uh, so hope you enjoy that. And stay tuned, as always. We've got a lot coming at you for 2024. It's going to be a great year, both on the water. We're headed to the Amazon in a few days. Then we'll be in the Bahamas. Then the usuals, Montana, New Mexico, Louisiana. Uh, it's going to be a great year on the YouTube channel. Uh, lots of lots of stuff in store so stay tuned as always be sure to subscribe if you don't already and uh thanks again for a great 2023 and happy new year here's to 2024. Flips Manly Pliers Tips. I mean, you can open bottles with these pliers quicker and easier than you can with anything out there. And, and let me, I mean, here's a bottle. Okay. Which I was going to open anyway and show you. Sure. But if you grab this bottle like this and put this cutter right underneath the top mm -hmm. like this. Like butter. I mean, could anything be easier than that? No. Of course not. Stop your fly cast. The loop doesn't really turn over at the other end until you stop the back end of the cast with your hand. It should be shooting, the line should be shooting through your hand. When it gets to where you want it to be, you stop it with your left hand, causing the front of the loop to immediately, the instant you stop it here, it turns over on the other end. So it looks like this. If you watch my hand, as this line, as this line shoots out, now I'm going to shoot this line, watch this line shoot, and then I stop it. And if you look at the line, you'll see how beautiful and straight it is laying on the water because I stopped it with this hand, allowing the other end to turn over. The two fundamentals of fly fishing. When you break fly fishing down into its basic form, there's really only two techniques, but the first technique uh, is called contact fly fishing. And contact fly fishing is when you're gonna cast the fly out, okay, and you're gonna have contact with the fly. You're gonna be moving the fly. Okay, so non-contact fly fishing is really the only other foundational technique in the sport of fly fishing. But non-contact fly fishing has two parts to it. And first and foremost, you have dry fly fishing, okay? And for the most part, when you're gonna cast a dry fly, you typically 
uh, want that dry fly to float with the speed of the current as if it were unattached to your leader. In other words, you do not have direct contact with the fly. You're not imparting action. A good leader starts in the butt. Um, let's remember this, okay? Let's remember that a good leader starts in the butt and a contact leader, okay? Um, a contact leader is one for contact fly fishing, where the leader is gonna go out perfectly straight at the target, the rod is gonna come down, the line is gonna go under your index finger and you have contact with the fly. Uh, actually, most of what we do around here at Mad River Outfitters is contact fly fishing. It's what I typically prefer to do. And so therefore, I need this butt section to be good. I need the energy to flow from the tip of the fly line right into that butt section. And then I'm gonna taper it down until I reach the final destination, which is my tippet. Better hookups with flip. It's an inline hook, very short shank. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendous action with that hook in line, with that eye in yeah. line. Uh -huh. um, and that very, very short shank uh, gives you better hookups. Mm -hmm. And they're less likely to to throw the hook as well. Much less likely with yeah. that short, yeah, with the shorter the shank. Then. It's it's funny you, you uh, bring this out. You know, we, uh, I don't know, a little over a year ago, we did a similar skit with Kelly Gallup, and he tied one of his flies uh, called a belly bumper, and it's also on a- No kidding. A, a, a in line. He's, Great minds think alike. He's That's become right. a big fan. In fact, he's got a hook <clears throat> called the belly bumper hook, and it's, all of them are these inline eyes. And I tell you, that is really one of my favorite flies, his yeah. belly bumper and the action on it. You're right. It just, you got a great action. It just flutters eye, yeah. back and forth. Wow. Who's making that hook? Do you know? Um, Have your people get back to me. Cut your loop. First thing that we do when we buy one of these lines, we man, get rid of the loop. <gasps> I'm going to do it. Okay, we, we didn't litter. No, we didn't. <laughs> okay, the loop is gone. You are the person, and, and Lefty to a certain extent, but you're the person that originally taught this to me, that a good leader starts in the butt. Yeah? Clever, catchy. <laughs> a good leader starts in the butt. So your butt section has to be right. And uh, I think that we, we've made that more or less crystal clear to most folks, but there's still a lot of confusement amongst our viewers as to how you determine what that butt section is. And the number one point of confusion is a lot of people thought that you and I are trying to match the diameter of this and this. And that is not the case. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, further? that's not the case. What we're really trying to do is transfer the energy of the cast, which comes in the form of an unrolling loop and what we're trying to do as that loop unrolls to the end of the front taper of the fly line we're trying to transfer every bit of that energy that we can to the butt section of the leader sleeping essentials right here i have my my lounge chair this is where i relax in the evenings after flip has gone to bed um, and then of course my bed and uh I have Spider-Man blanket. I have uh, SpongeBob SquarePants sheets. And then the bottom layer is again, the amazing Spider-Man. So I'm really not sure what to think. I'm really confused. Um, I, uh, I have a, a spidey sense, but it's very soft and squishy. Versi and poly leaders. Uh, first and foremost, to explain, um, Versi leaders and poly leaders are, they're called, they are in fact called leaders. And I don't mean to sound flippant, but they are leaders, called leaders for a reason, because that's what they are. Under no circumstances are these sink tips uh, or uh, anything else. I mean, I use a lot of the floating ones, but they also make them in different sink rates 
Um, but they are not sink tips. They are butt sections of leaders. Okay. A lot of folks will try to tell you that you don't need a sinking tip fly line, uh, that you can just loop on a Versi leader on the front and it's just as good. And that's just simply not true. They do not replace sink tips. Now I do use the sinking Versi leaders, say if I'm fishing a streamer on my four weight or five weight, uh, on a floating line, they can be helpful in shallow water. Uh, but again, they absolutely do not replace a sinking tip fly line. That's right, in a sink tip fly line, the, the formulas that we've shown you over the years are typically four to five foot in length. But in this case, this is a butt section of a leader. Now with these Versi leaders, these are seven foot. So you would not want to run four or five foot of continued tapered leader off this. You're just going to add tippet. And yes, in the case of most streamers, I might add a foot to foot and a half of the appropriate tippet. Um, on a larger streamer, yeah, probably 13 thousandths. On a smaller streamer, maybe 1x or 2x tippet. You can typically run the tippet right off of here. It has a loop in the end of it, so you can go loop to loop with your tippets. And then in the case of the Versi leaders, the floating Versi leaders, again, these are seven foot. I love these for throwing larger dry flies like grasshoppers. If I have to cast a little farther, or maybe if it's windy, for example, when I'm in Montana, I'm always fishing these uh, floating Versi leaders from Rio or poly leaders from Airflow. And you can just typically add about two foot of tippet to the front of these. On grasshoppers, of course, I'm usually fishing 2x or 3x, and two foot is fine off the end of that. Where your rod tip belongs. And just a reminder, and this is gonna tie into what I'm gonna talk about here, but you really wanna remember that you always start and you always end a fly cast with your rod tip below your belt. And if you're practicing in a field, I really want you to put your rod tip on the ground. This is so, so, so critical import of importance. And so many people want to start their cast here. And if you start your cast here, you're really only making half of a cast, okay? Start your cast here, you're making half of a cast. Just like if you creep forward during the stroke, during while the line's straightening out behind you, you're only making half a cast coming forward. And it's very hard to be good and to make a good cast if you only make half a one. And then when you're fishing, you want to put your rod tip as, uh, as close to the water as you can. In my case, I've got some lily pads here, but if those weren't there, I'd have the tip of my rod in the water. Stir the pot with blame. When it comes in, if I'm doing a two-hand strip with, the rod, with, with my hand or just doing a traditional strip, I'll immediately go into the figure eight by knowing that the fly is 20 inches. I'll, I'll hold the line, pin it in my hand, and then grab this longer extended butt. And what I'll do is that's what I call stir the pot. Um, and I'm just making these big ovals and these big, big circles and I'm constantly watching how that fish reacts to it. If the, and a lot of times they'll eat when it shows profile. So I try to make really big, wide turns instead of really tight, sharp turns. Because if you do that, the bait's gonna end up, or the fly's gonna end up coming back at the fish and, and no predator gets attacked. Mm -hmm. A prey item is not gonna attack a predator. They're gonna run from them. So I'd make sure I make big wide turns and I'm using the butt to do all this. I'm not using my, my, my casting hand. I'm using my non-casting hand to do this. And that takes the pressure off your casting hand. So I'm just pushing against it, just like that. And the wider I can get it and you have to get in an athletic position, bend your knees and, and hunch down because I'll go deep on the straightaway and I'll I arc out and up on the on the out and that's a lot of times when they hit it. Never get a tangled reel again. Just attach an Oros indicator to the end. There you go. Okay? If you're not familiar with the Oros indicators, they unscrew. They've got kind of a male side with a slit right down the middle and the female side. And all you do is, of course that's going to require glasses. You just slide your tippet right through that slit on the male side and you tighten the female side down and bada book, bada bang, you will never 
reel your tippet all the way up into your reel again. Quickly swap fly lines. But on my six weight, seven weight, eight weight, nine weight, 10 weight, et cetera, et cetera, I might need to swap out lines. Sometimes I need a floating line, sometimes I need an intermediate, a sink tip, a full sink. And so the way we do this is we tie a bimini twist in the backing, creating this, this large loop, okay? It's uh, theoretically a bimini loop, but this is the bimini twist knot, okay? So we leave this loop on the back end of the fly lane, and now you can easily, and again, I'll have to put these on. <laughs> Didn't expect that. What do you think, Flip? Way to go, Brian. You did it. Yeah, I agree. So you've got your bimini loop and you've got your loop in the back. It's really simple. So I come through once and then I go over top the spool and bring the spool through the loop. And then I just give it one twist and then come through again. And that way you get those four connection points of where the backing is pulling on the fly line there. And it makes for a much stronger, much more reliable much more durable connection, okay? And this will go through your guides without much trouble. Give it a, one more through, and then you're all set to go. <clears throat> and you spool this up and put it away and put the new line on. Don't creep. You are doing something wrong, and that is that you're coming forward too soon. It's also called creep, okay? And what you're doing is you're going back, boom, and maybe stopping, but then you're wandering forward prematurely. Uh, you may have heard this before. I call it premature evacuation of the upcast. So you're coming forward too soon, starting the cast from here, when you should be starting from maybe even back here. Okay, so you're going boom, and you're instantly wandering forward. Almost everybody does it. And I'm talking intermediate, advanced fly casters. Uh, people come to us to take lessons. Uh, people that have been fishing for 40, 50 years, and I'll point out that they're wandering forward too soon or creeping. Now this causes something called a tailing loop, and that is what is eventually causing those little knots and your leader to form. Fish with bright fly lines. A fish that you clearly see, but you're fishing him from a boat that's being pulled. And there's wind, and there's current, and the boat could be moving. You make your cast, and you begin to strip, but the boat could be drifting toward the fish as you're stripping. If you can clearly see the end of your line, and you can see that your stripping speed is moving the end of your line the way you want it to move, at the speed that you want it to move, it's for certain your fly is doing the same thing, 10, 12, 15 feet away, the length of your leader. Very often you can't see the fly, sure. but you can always see the end of this fly line. Yep. So you can make the end of that fly line behave the way you want your fly to behave. Hmm. moving in small little increments, but actually making progress over the bottom. If the, if, if the boatman can't keep the boat in one position for one reason, the bottom might be too hard, he can't stake out, um, might be too much wind, um, any, but hey, whatever the front of that line does, the fly does. Yeah. So as a fishing tool, um, just the color alone, separates it from most other lines. I'm to the point now where I, I just can't uh, fish anything but a brightly colored fly line. Yeah, I'm the same way. I like I like this orange. I also like white. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, you know, and people um, who market these dark color lines are quick to say, well, <clears throat> the fish see those lines. Well, if you're showing the fish your fly line, you're not fishing correctly. <laughs> um, it's as simple as that. No need to tie dry fly leaders. Almost every day I, I have people say, well, I've seen the streamer leaders or the contact stuff that you and Flip have shown. I've seen the nymph leaders, but what do you do for dry flies? Can you give me a dry fly formula? The answer is I don't tie dry fly leaders. 
I, I, I just don't, and I'm gonna tell you why. And the reason is, is that I use furled leaders for dry flies, and I use poly leaders from Airflow or Versi leaders from Rio. And <clears throat> again, uh, just no need to tie dry fly leaders. If you do want to tie them, you can. And in our knots and leaders class, I do ha I have a handout, and there is the George Harvey leader formula. Um, so if you want to tie them, if you just love tying blood knots, George Harvey leader formula is the way to go. But I much prefer these furled leaders and poly leaders. They just work better than anything I can tie. They're just super, super, super ridiculously easy. Backhand cast with Josh. One of the main things that I see a lot of people do from a boat when they're first starting out is they forget about their backhanded cast. Now when, we're, when you're a right-handed fly caster and you're going to the left bank going downstream, that'll be your, your normal forehand cast that everybody's used to just like that. But when we wanna switch up and we wanna to go towards our right side, most of the time, we really don't wanna be casting over the boat like this if we can help it. Reason being is we've got a very, very sharp hook, at least we should have a very, very sharp hook on the end of our fly line and we don't wanna be casting it over our fishing buddy, over our guide, over our significant other. We just really wanna refrain from doing that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna just turn ourselves around <clears throat> and we're gonna make what's called a backhanded cast. So it's essentially the same cast that you're doing over to this side. All that you're gonna do is change your trajectory as well as where you're looking and where you lay it down. All right, I kind of refer to this motion you're doing with your hands like you're swinging a, like a ping pong paddle or a tennis racket or something similar to that. We don't wanna, never really wanna turn our hand and go like this. You can see my, my loops are very, very wide. I don't really have the greatest accuracy. So I'm just gonna turn the back of my hand towards my target and almost pull towards my target as I come forward towards that right side. Place your hand in the right spot. Next tip is to put your thumb at the end of the cork grip. So many times when I'm fishing uh, or uh, teaching a casting class, you see people with their thumbs back here. And look around on YouTube, you're gonna see everybody with a thumb way back here on this grip, okay? And in fact, I had one guy recently, he said, well, I hold it back there because I think it makes the lever longer. Well, it does make the lever longer, but just like choking up on a baseball bat, remember in Little League Baseball or Softball, they told you you had a fast pitcher to choke up on the bat? Well, if you choke up on the fly rod and you put your, and that's why I love this rod so much, it's got this really super, super wells at the end and just a great thumb place on the end of the cork grip and I just get such great push on the tip just like I'm pushing the button on a screen door this grip just works perfectly so put your thumb at the end of the cork grip you're going to get higher tip speed you're going to have greater control of where the tip goes your thumb tells the tip where to go it's not going to do anything unless your thumb tells it to go there how to cast a sinking line with Blaine hey everybody I want to talk to you about uh a good tip on casting sinking lines. One of the best things I could tell you about ca casting sinking lines is you want to keep your rod low to the water, pointing at the water, and get a tight line going. The next move you're going to make is what we call a roll pickup. It's like doing a little roll cast, but you're, what you're doing is you're bringing the line off, off the depths and bringing it up to a shallower position within the water column. And once you do that, so you do your roll pickup, that's bringing the the line maybe 10 feet down up to about the top two or three feet and once you do that then you're able to make a, an outside cast and then over the top and you're back in the game casting sinking lines people are in my opinion ex extremely scared of it they don't understand how it works but if you really want to become a great caster i think sinking lines are the easiest lines to cast in the world period i use them all the time whether it's intermediates or floating you can't just pick up the line immediately like you do a floating line. 
And the reason that is is because the line's down. You got to get it up this to, uh, to a level where you can pick it up to make that cast. And the best way to do that, even if you got 20 feet of line out, is do a, what we call a roll pickup. And you're just rolling it, and that brings the line up out to the side and then out and you're back in the game. Tying tip with Tim. Even really good tires have, have some problems with dubbing. One of the biggest tips I can give people is squeeze with your fingers down here and pull straight up on the material. And you wanna get the fibers aligned with your tying thread. In other words, parallel to your tying thread mm -hmm. as opposed to just pulling a clump off and mashing it on there. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, this next little tip comes to me, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Tom Baltz, who just uh, won the Orvis Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, he's, wow. he's a, uh, a longtime guide in, in uh, Pennsylvania, fabulous parachute tire. He says leave the bottom part of your little dubbing on, undone, right, untwisted. So with the next clump, again, parallel to your tying thread, but you weave the f second clump in with the first. And it makes a, it's not a great trick. <laughs> Who knew? Um, no, 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 no. I've always, I've always, always just right on top, just and gone and tightened the whole thing up and then come over top. Yeah, yeah really, really smart technique. Another tip that I, I got to give you guys if you want to improve your fly tying straight away, one of the best things you can do is really concentrate on wrapping with good tension and keep it going all the way around. We all have a tendency to kind of lob our wraps over like mm -hmm. this, but if you can keep that tension all the way around, almost immediately you'll you'll notice your, your flies look better. They, they, they just look tighter and um, uh, they're gonna stay together, everything. I always check the far side just to make sure I don't have a white spot sticking out there. Upgrade your fly storage. Fly boxes, we can't have enough. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and there's not a perfect fly box, so I wind up using a variety of different things for different uses, for different purposes. But this is one that we've had in the shop for uh, quite some time now, but and you've probably seen me use it before, but I thought I'd bring it to your attention, and it falls under the Matter of Outfitters brand. You can find it in the Matter of Outfitters category in the fly box department on our website, and it's called the 16 Compartment Adjustable Box. It's just a plastic compartment box, uh, but they're cheap. And that's what I like about them because I'm cheap also and I work at a fly shop. So kind of a cool box, wildly versatile. I keep all kinds of different things in here. Um, different flies, I use them for my panfish flies. I use them for a variety of different streamers. But first and foremost, 16 compartments is the way it comes, but you can uh, use these adjustable dividers to make different size compartments for different lengths and different size of flies. Uh, you know, if you're fishing big game changers or something, you can have just one long compartment. Uh, the possibilities are almost endless. How to prevent your cast from failing. I would do two things when you practice your casting. Turn and watch. Watch your rod tip and make sure that you don't creep forward prematurely and then also watch the line for the line to straighten out almost completely and then you gradually drag it forward and then when you're coming forward, smooth it out. Don't slam it, don't force it. Smooth that forward cast out. Another thing that you've heard us say is if it doesn't straighten out behind you, it won't straighten out in front of you. If you remember those couple of things as you practice. The foundation of a leader leader basics. So first and foremost, the word leader, it's very important to understand that that equals a tapered butt section plus a tippet, what's called the tippet. And it is wildly important to have a tapered butt section. Okay, that tapered butt section, you can almost kind of think of it as a continuation of your fly line. Okay, the energy that comes off the tip of your fly line, it's got to have somewhere to go. So it goes into that thick part of the leader. The thick part of the leader is what attaches to the fly line, and that's for a reason. It's physics. So as that energy travels down that butt section, that energy is dissipated and until it reaches the final destination, which is called your tippet. And your tippet is the business end to which you're gonna tie the fly. Never have split shots slip again. 
there actually is a tool that is made by our friends at Dr. Slick, and this is called the split shot clamp. And these clamps are specially designed for crimping split shot. And, and no, of course, friends, you don't have to have these to crimp split shot. You can do it with hemostats, you can, you can do it with your teeth. These can be helpful, and I can also tell you that they are wildly popular. We sell a ton of these things. But they have little divots in the jaws, which help you to crimp down on the split shot without smashing it too much, and it just does really get a perfect crimp of the split shot onto your tippet. So I, I don't know, Tommy, what you're using to crimp that split shot on, but it, it, you know, so a tool like this, which is not outrageously expensive, but those may in fact help you. Um, uh, uh, of course, you can crimp split shot on with pliers, with anything for that matter. You can use your teeth. Um, just don't tell your dentist I told you that. So there you have it, Dr. Slick split shot clamps. A leader's purpose job of a leader is it must deliver the fly to the target. That's its first job. Its second job is it must permit and even enhance a lifelike presentation. <clears throat> We've gotten into this quite a bit here on the channel. Uh, we may get into it a little bit here in this little mini series coming up, uh, but there's ways that you can build leaders that actually help a fly to behave properly in the water. Or you've heard me say this before, to act like food. If it looks like food, which most flies do, and acts like food, they'll probably eat it. You have to make it act like food, and your leader can be an important part of making it act like food. And number three, it must be robust enough to survive the fight of the fish. In other words, you can't go so thin to achieve such a lifelike presentation that you'd never be able to land the fish. So number one, it's got to be able to deliver the fly to the target. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Then it must permit and even enhance a lifelike presentation. And last but not least, it has to be robust enough to survive the fight of the fish. Avoid casting mistakes with flip. Noise in the water maybe doesn't scare fish, but it does tip them off. Lots of times you make noise, you're busted. The fish may not rip away, but he knows you're there. He knows something's wrong. Something's changed in his world. And there's a lot of noise made by lifting your back cast out of the water and just ripping it back. If you can watch, take a look at this line and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. When I just back cast it off the water, do you see all the water that I've disturbed when I do that? Some people call it water hauling. Ridiculous. Can you see all the disturbance that I'm making when I do that? Fish certainly hear that. But there's another way to do this. You can simply, by lifting your rod tip, extending it and lifting it, you can lift every bit of this fly line out of the water so that, as Brian said, I'm only casting the fly. And maybe it's a little bit of the leader. I'll demonstrate that. Watch this, I'm gonna pick that line up off the water and just back cast the fly and notice that there was no disturbance on the water. Watch this. Let me do that again. Come on and take a look at this. Just like the book.